Hi Lou by Minimax has a new video generation model called T2V-01 Director. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? T2V just means text to video, 01 means it's first generation, and the director at the end is the important thing about this model. T2V01 Director is all about giving you control over the camera movements. Video might have all sorts of movements. The character or subject of the video might do its own moving, a person might stand up, run away, a car might drive by. But there's also the camera movement. What is the camera doing? Is it a static shot where the camera is just fixed and sitting still? Does it zoom in, pan right, truck left, or all these other words that are not familiar to me because I'm not a filmmaker. And as a non-filmmaker that just wants to create cool stuff, what I like about this model is that it's teaching me the vocabulary and to some degree how to use it to get what I want. Let's take a look. From the main page of Hilu, come over to the left and click on the create button. It dropped me in the text to video model, which which is exactly where we want to be for this. This model does not support image to video yet, it is just text to video. To make sure you have the right model selected, come down to the bottom underneath a model. It says T2V-01 Director, that's the one that I'm looking for. If there was something different there, I can click on this little settings button and select the T2V-01 Director from the options. The text in the prompt box tells us that we can enhance camera movements by inputting natural language or inserting instructions, and then it gives us a link to a how-to. We'll definitely take a look at that in just a minute. I just popped in a little prompt here of a mountain climber stands triumphantly on the peak of a snow-covered mountain surrounded by bright blue skies and a beautiful landscape. When it comes to motion in this video, as for the subject, I'm hoping it'll pick up on that word triumphantly for my mountain climber and have them sort of posing or posturing or looking happy and triumphant. But I haven't told it what I want the camera to do. So right now it could give me anything from a static shot to a drone flyby to the mountain climbers holding a cell phone on a selfie stick. That's where this handy dandy new button comes into play. When we click this video camera, we get some options. We have cinematic shots on this first tab, so we can say left circling, right circling, upward tilt, left walking, right walking. And as you hover each one of these, it'll give you a little preview of what it's doing, what it's all about. Stage right, stage left, scenic shot. So we've got nine different cinematic shots here to pick from, and each one of these is a combination of camera movements that you'll find over in the free selection tab. It gives us a little tip here saying don't use more than three of these at once, and just like the combination cinematic shots, it gives us a preview when we hover of what it's doing. So this is truck left. We can hover and see what truck right does. And pan right, push in and out, you've got a pedestal up and down, tilt up and down, zoom in and out, a shake, tracking shot, and static shot where the camera doesn't move at all. For our mountain climber that's reached the top, let's go back to cinematic shots. I like the idea of one of these circling left or right. We'll just pick left because it's the first one. And take a look at what that did to our prompt. It added this in brackets, truck left, pan right, tracking shot. Well, apparently that's how you get a left circling shot. I'm gonna leave the quantity on one and click the go button. It'll cost 30 credits. And here's our masterpiece. We've got our mountain climber at the top looking triumphant and we do have somewhat of a left circling shot. Even though it's only a six second video and you can't get a whole lot done in six seconds, I think it could have done a little bit more circling if it moved off that static shot in the beginning a little bit quicker. Let's take a look at the very first thing I tried with T2V01 Director and that's this prompt that I got from ChatGPT of a lively medieval marketplace filled with merchants selling goods from wooden stalls, townsfolk and period attire, barter and chat, while a juggler entertains a group of children, horses pull carts over cobblestone streets, truck right tracking shot. Again with this one, I put the camera direction at the end, I generated this video before I read any of the instructions on how it's supposed to work or what you're supposed to do or really looking at what was and wasn't working in other videos. The camera is trucking right, so the camera is moving along and it seems to be tracking these two folks here that are walking through the marketplace. The faces are not great. One thing I've found is the more faces you have in a scene, the worse they come out, but some other really strange things are happening here, particularly in this mess of, I'm not real sure, I guess this is supposed to be someone juggling, but she's carrying these kids and then this thing sort of breaks out and she morphs into another person standing over here at this vendor. And I'm sure there's other weird stuff happening in here that there's just too much to take in. 
I think this could have come out better if I had been more specific about what exactly we're tracking. Maybe it is those two people. Maybe it's a single person walking along and then describe the rest of the scene in the background. And also maybe just not having so much going on in this one little six second clip. For my next attempt, instead of just putting all the camera direction at the end, I actually put it in the prompt where I thought it made more sense. But again, the results weren't terrific. There are cars going by, splashing water. It's weird to me that people walking in the street have umbrellas, people on the sidewalk do not have umbrellas. And then at the end of the video where the steam is supposed to be rising off subway grates, it instead seems to be rising off some canopies on the buildings or something. Looking back at my prompt, I did include this tracking shot direction, but I didn't make it real clear what it was supposed to be tracking. It might've worked out better if I'd been specific about a particular person walking on the street with an umbrella, and I wasn't very specific about this tilt up and the steam rising from the subway grate. In my mind, I'm envisioning that the camera sort of looks at this subway grate and then follows the steam up into the air. But I didn't say that. Next, I try to put some of this camera direction in the beginning with truck right tracking shot. A man in modern casual clothing walks alone through a narrow alley in an old Italian village. The man looks up at a rooftop pedestal up. I didn't really ask for this modern vehicle to go through or all that laundry to be hanging. I don't know that there's so much there. The guy's face is just pretty terrible. He does look up uh, and the camera does pedestal up. So I'll give it that it did that, but it didn't quite get what I was looking for. So I made a few tweaks to that prompt. I put the camera direction after we talked about the guy walking. And this time I had him look up at a bird landing on a rooftop and put the pedestal up direction after that. And I also added this line about the scene being very detailed, revealing every nuance of the man's facial expression. So now we are actually following the guy as he's walking right, which is great. I've got a bird sitting on a rooftop. He looks up and the camera does go up, but it didn't quite make the connection that I was hoping for. However, I felt like I was starting to learn some things and figuring out where to put the pieces and how to use the words a little bit better. I finally looked at the instructions and realized a couple things. One is that you don't have to use those click and insert camera movements that are provided under that little video camera icon and that plain language is okay to use. So you don't necessarily have to put your camera movements in brackets. So I tried this prompt, basically a car pulling into a gas station. I wanted it to sort of track the wheels of the car. And then as the car stops at the gas pumps, the camera to come up and look at the driver. And in this prompt, I didn't use the little brackets or the clickies. I just explained it. The camera tracks the front wheel. And I made a very specific car here because I find with AI image and video generators, if I don't give it a specific specific make, model, and year, it'll sometimes make up a very strange looking car. Then I said, as the car reaches the pumps and stops, the camera tilts up and pans right, revealing the driver. And then I described the driver. That's not a 1969 GTO. It's at least similar to the vibe I was going for. So the car comes in, we're not necessarily tracking the wheels, but it pulls into the pump. It does rise up. It doesn't pan quite like I asked it to. And it sort of reveals the driver then who meets the description I gave. So I made a few tweaks to my prompt. This time I said the camera tracks the driver's side wheels, truck left of a red, adding that color in there, 1969 Pontiac GTO convertible as it drives into an old gas station off a country road. As the car reaches the gas pumps and stops, the camera tilts up and pans right, revealing a driver, a beautiful and glamorous woman wearing sunglasses and white gloves. We're trucking left, but the car seems to be just sitting there at the gas pumps and she's still driving, I guess, even though she's sitting still. And not only does she look a little bit odd here, but also the dashboard of that car makes absolutely no sense. It also puts her sort of in the middle and to the right as it comes up and zooms in on her. I was starting to get determined with this idea. So I changed up the prompt a little bit. I put the car description and then I said, tracking shot truck left. But I forgot to put a verb in here, like drives or moves off a country road into an old gas station. And then I went on to say, as the car reaches the gas pumps and stops, the camera focuses on the driver, described the driver, and then said, pedestal up, push in. I wasn't sure this was clear, but I thought it'd be a good experiment. And it by far produced the funniest result of the day.
The car pulls in, it gets dirt on the tires, I actually like that, and then all of a sudden, who is this woman crawling out from under the wheel well? Now it got tracking shot just fine, it definitely did the push in and then the pedestal up, but it focuses on this entirely new character that it's added. She wasn't there as the car pulls up, so she must have been hanging on the side of the car or under it as it was driving. I made a couple of tweaks to the prompt, like adding in that the convertible is driving off a country road into an old gas station. After the car car stops, I said the camera moves and put pedestal up in brackets and pushes in on the driver. The car seems to be driving in okay, it's sort of sideways to everything, and we do get a nice close-up then of the driver, which is pretty good, no complaints there. I tried getting a little bit more natural with the language based on some examples I saw in Hilu's how-to guide. So I said the shot tracks the front driver's side wheel of a black 1967 Pontiac GTO convertible as it drives from right to left off a country road into an old gas station. As the car stops beside a gas pump, the shot moves pedestal up and pushes in on the driver, a beautiful woman, blah, blah, blah. So now I'm not using the little brackets at all for camera direction, I'm trying to just describe it. I don't know that my driver's being very safe because she seems to be looking to the side, but it does seem to be tracking the car and then it moves in onto the driver's face, which is pretty cool. Now you might have noticed that the white lettering on the tire seems to disappear and reappear at different times. That's kind of a bummer. I've talked about the instructions or the how-to a few times, so let's take a look at that because I think it's really helpful. So it starts off showing you to select the text to video option and then make sure you've got this director model selected and then you can insert your camera movements by clicking the little video camera button. Then it goes through and shows you the different options that are available under the free select. We went through those a little bit ago, but it also breaks that down a little bit to tell you what happens when you select those. So if you have pan left in there in brackets, that's a single shot is applied. If you have pan left and truck right, well, that's basically a combination. Both of those are going to be applied simultaneously. And if you have something described in your prompt, pan left, and then you describe something else and say truck right, that's saying the left pan shot occurs, then the right truck shot will occur. This note is really important, and I missed it early on. Insert the camera control function at the point in the prompts where the shot movement occurs. Then it gives us some examples of push in a lamb stands in the snow. Or pan left, pan right a woman is drinking coffee so this is going to pan left and pan right while the woman's drinking coffee that is some hot coffee this next example has a few different camera movements happening at the right time so a man picks up a book pedestal up then begins reading it static the shot is pedestal up it's moving up and then the camera stops and becomes static as the man begins reading it that makes perfect sense another example over here that gets a little bit more detailed above an ancient battlefield pan right pedestal down the frame reveals a close-up of a female warrior, her face is smeared with dirt, and her eyes radiate determination. Notice in this prompt that it combined camera direction in these little brackets, the pan right pedestal down, with a natural language, the frame reveals a close-up of a female warrior. The how-to then goes into these cinematic shots a little bit, explaining what they are. A left circling shot is truck left pan right tracking shot, it combines all three of those. A left walking shot is truck left tracking shot. Upward tilt is a combination of push in, pedestal up. That scenic shot is using truck left and pedestal up. And they've got the rest of them here. And each one tells you what the cinematic shot's name is, what the combination of camera movements are, and the preview video of what that's supposed to look like. The next section about text prompt talks about how you can use natural language to control the camera movements. So without clicking one of those options or using the little brackets, we can say something like left walking shot or zoom in, and it describes what's gonna happen there and what the combination might look like. Down here in some of these later examples, we get some real examples of prompts that are just using natural language like the shot pans left while tilting upward starting from a small rabbit looking up at the left gradually moving toward the sky with a balloon floating upward along the rabbit's line of sight. Notice these are telling us that the camera movement it ends up with is a pan left tilt up but we didn't necessarily have to click and insert those bracketed terms from the selections on the video generation page. In this example, they have the shot pushing in while zooming out, revealing a woman with a shocked expression. The background is a blurry beach crowded with people. I would love to know what this woman is seeing exactly that has her so darn shocked. Maybe it's just the prices at the snack bar. This example looks pretty complex. The camera pans left and then right, tracking a woman in a red dress as she walks toward the subway station. I think that came out to be a pretty interesting shot. I'm seeing examples that look really good where people are just using natural language to describe what they want the camera to do. 
and also some things that have turned out really well when folks have put the bracketed camera movements at the very beginning or very end of the prompt. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Nothing in generative AI has shown to be perfect to me at least yet, but I like this for a couple of reasons. One, the people who know what they're doing seem to think this is doing a much better job at adhering to their instructions than what they've had in the past. And for folks like me that until now didn't know that left circling was a combination of camera moves or a truck right from a pedestal, whatever, being able to click that little video camera button and get the right words to use to make things happen, well, that can only help improve the results we're gonna get. Hey, thank you for watching. I appreciate you hanging out with me and I hope you'll come see me in another video.